Hello, my beautiful children, and welcome to another episode of Cisco's Private Collection. Before we get started, I'd like to remind you to hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. If you enjoy watching our content, show us some love by liking the video, and ring the bell to make sure you get notified whenever we drop new content. We appreciate you all. How's everybody doing today? My name is Isaias, and I'm going to be taking over on today's episode of Cisco's private collection. Cisco, unfortunately, cannot be bothered right now. He's in his happy place. And for those of you who don't like me, you just Bruh. Whoa, whoa, hold on there, pal. You can't just be so aggressive <laughs> like that. Come on. <laughs> We're running a show here. Come on, man. On today's episode of Not Cisco's Private Collection, I'm going to be talking about my personal Classic Army M249 saw that I've turned into a Mark 46. The base gun started off as a Classic Army M249 Mark II. Uh, however, I definitely wanted to build this into a Mark 46. That was the goal from when I first bought it. So starting from tip to rear, uh, I have a Classic Army M249 flash hider. I removed the heat shield because I wanted it to be easier to access the battery compartment. A Bravo P15 with a pressure pad. I mainly use this to paint targets whenever I'm using night vision in Wilson West games. I have a G&G &G vertical grip. Uh, I changed out the standard box mag for the Classic Army Nutsack box mag, the 1,200 rounds. And if you're wondering why it's called the Nutsack. So you're gonna tell them or? Anyway, uh, I have the G&G &G scope on here. You know me on most of my guns, this is the optic of my choice. I have an ANK buffer tube and an ANK 249 stock. The goal of this build was to get a Mark 46. Now, Classic Army does make a Mark 46. However, at the time when I bought this, this was uh, the Mark 46 was not available. So this was all they had. So I went in there knowing full well that I liked the Mark 46. I have uh, felt an Airsoft one before and it felt super comfortable compared to the traditional uh, 249 with the full stock. I like the folding stock. I prefer this optic to be able to see a little bit further down range. And this works very well as a support role for uh, whenever I go to Milsom games or whenever I'm just going to my local field. Internally, I have a Classic Army high torque motor. Uh, we had to take a short, uh, long type motor and actually shorten it down because there were no short types available. I have a set of custom made Lonex 1321 gear sets. For whatever reason, I couldn't find any 1321 gears and all we had were some Lonex ones, so we had to shorten those down. I have a Kratos Piston. That's probably one of my favorite pieces of this gun. The Kratos Piston is incredibly durable, uh, especially if you're gonna be using high rate of fire builds such as this. I highly recommend it for all my LMG boys out there. I have a bulkier hop-up unit. Uh, main reason why I switched out the hop-up unit is because the stock hop-up unit uh, cannot be R-hopped. You need to get an aftermarket one, such as a bulkier. I have a modified hard bucking in there with a Prometheus 603 Type 4 barrel. Uh, I also have the Classic Army MOSFET and I modified the trigger so it's actually a two-stage trigger. Uh, if I pull it about halfway, you're looking at about maybe 28, uh, maybe a little bit lower uh, rate of fire. But if I pull it all the way, you're looking at about uh, 30, would be a good approximation. The playstyle that I have with this gun is sort of all around. I go wherever I'm needed. I've built this gun so that I can get the range that match up to a lot of, not DMR, but just a little bit under that. Usually so maybe some built out uh, M4s. And that's typically how I run this as primarily a rifle. Uh, many people who run LMGs and airsoft sort of stick to the LMG role and they'll just stay back maybe mid and then just provide suppressing fire, which is good. You should be able to do this and I definitely do that for my team. Uh, even in Milsims, I'm always doing this. But I will also run this as a rifle and I'll just run point if I have to. Just because again, I don't mind the weight and I actually, that's my place, that's how I've always played. The role of an LMG is actually quite interesting. It uh, definitely requires the participation of both the field and the field's rules. Uh, should you find a field and the rules allow for full auto or at the very least burst fire, you can prove to be quite an asset for your team. Uh, the LMG uh, main job is to provide suppressing fire. Uh, that is to discourage enemy movement and prevent them from getting too squirrely with you and advancing on your position, being it blocking off lanes or just holding a general area down. Uh, intimidation is also another factor to keep in mind. Uh, the, the sound of an LMG definitely can discourage an enemy from moving or advancing on your position. Nobody wants to mess with someone that sounds this mean. For those who are on the fence about owning an LMG, uh, I will say that being one of the very few people on the field that runs a full auto gun in a semi-only field 
Uh, it makes you feel quite powerful, and the power trip you get from that is pretty addicting. For those who are trying to source one, I highly recommend checking out our website, airsoftgi.com, for all LMGs and LMG parts. Thank you all for watching this episode of Cisco's Private Collection. Hopefully this will be a nice little taste of something different as you're all used to eating Cisco's mayonnaise. Thank you all for watching, and I'll see you on the next episode of Cisco's Private Collection.